Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. In this tutorial today, I'm going to show you a couple of methods for making a hard book cover with a spine. This type of cover is suitable for many different styles of book. The second one that I'm going to show you will be a traditional cover with a hard spine, and this first one will be a hard cover with a soft, flexible spine. Along with a book to bind, you'll need two pieces of stiff cardboard for this first cover. An important step is to check the direction that the grain runs in your cardboard. To do this, you just bend the cardboard lightly in both directions. One direction will have a little more give than the other, and your grain runs along that bend. I draw an arrow on my board in the direction that the grain runs. If you want to, you can cover your book with decorative paper. For my covers today, I'm using something called book cloth. This is fabric that has papery backing on it that stops any glue from seeping through the fabric. I measure my book cloth against my pieces of cardboard and then roughly cut it down to size. And then I place the pieces of cardboard down on the reverse side of the book cloth exactly where I want them to go. And I trace the outline of the cardboard with a pencil. My ruler is about three centimeters wide, which I find is a good width to trim the book cloth to so I use it to cut the edges nice and neatly to the same width all the way around. If you don't have a sharp utility knife, you can totally use a pair of scissors for this step. I like the knife and ruler method because it's a bit quicker and neater. You'll find a list of everything I use to make my covers in the description of this video, but along with book cloth, a knife, cardboard, a cutting mat and a ruler, you'll also need PVA glue, a glue brush, some waxed paper and some heavy books or a book press to weigh down the book as the glue dries. While I'm finishing the marking up here and trimming this cloth, now seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can go and support it. Every bit of support is really appreciated, especially with my goal to make a video every week this year. So if you find what I make useful, please consider heading over to Patreon and supporting me there. When you've cut your cloth neatly down to size, it's time to cut the corners away so that you don't have a lot of bulk in the road when you stick the edges down. There are a few different ways to do this, and I'm going to show you two slightly different methods in this video. For this first book, I folded up the cloth all the way around the lines that I marked, where the edges of the cardboard will be. Then I cut away just outside the squares at the corners that the fold lines made. It's important not to cut all the way up to the line right in the corner. You need to leave at least a few millimetres of breathing space in the cloth so that it properly covers the edge of the cardboard at the corner. With the method that I used to cut away the corners for this cover, there'll be quite a bit of overlap with the cloth in those corners. This is fine if you're using quite a thick paper in your book, but if you're using thinner paper, you might want to use the method with less overlap that I'll be showing you in the next cover. When you're ready to stick your cardboard down, cover both pieces with a generous amount of PVA glue. When you stick the cardboard in place, the grain should run in the same direction as the spine, from the top to the bottom of the book. It's important to keep the grain consistent like this so that your book cover won't warp or bend in weird ways. This is why I like to write on the board which direction the grain runs, and I glue up the other side of the cardboard so that I can still read it. Make sure you leave enough room between the pieces of cardboard for your flexible spine.
When it's time to paste up the edges, I like to start with the longer sides. So in this case, that's the top and the bottom. I put some scrap paper under the edges as I go so that I don't get glue all over my table and my cutting mat. And I apply a very generous amount of glue to one edge, then fold it over using my bone folder to keep everything as crisp and sharp as possible. You'll probably get some glue bleeding out when you stick down the edges. This is totally fine, just keep a clean cloth handy to wipe any glue off your hands and bone folder so that it doesn't get on the outside of the book. The next step is to glue up the sides and to finish the corners properly you just tuck in the tiny bit of cloth at each corner with the pointy end of your bone folder before folding up and sticking down the side edges. To make my soft spine, I'm using a piece of decorative paper to reinforce the spine on the inside of the book. I trimmed it so that it overhangs the spine gap by at least a couple of centimetres on each side, and so that it's just a little bit shorter than the height of the book. Then I stuck it in place with my PVA glue and bone folder. When you're done sticking everything down, flip the cover over and run over the front with the edge of your bone folder, just to make sure everything is flat and stuck down well. When all that was done, I wrapped the cover with some wax paper and sat it under some heavy books for a while, while the glue dried and I made the next cover. After it's dried for a while, I'll stick my little accordion book inside. The process for making the cover with the hard spine is almost identical to the previous book, so I won't talk through absolutely every step again, but I will go over the details where I did things differently. The first difference is that I also cut a piece of cardboard for the spine, which I measured against the book block that I plan to put inside this cover. When I cut the cardboard for my covers, I measure the first one against the book pages making it slightly larger than the cover by a few millimetres. Then I cut the second cover against the first one to ensure that they're exactly the same size. 
When I cut, I use lots of light passes with my utility knife instead of trying to cut through the cardboard in one pass, as this way I'm less likely to apply too much pressure and slip with the knife, and I also end up with a much neater edge. To cover the inside of the spine in this book, I used a second piece of book cloth in a contrasting colour. It's unlikely that this will be super visible when I put the book block inside, but it's something that I like to do just in case, and it also helps reinforce and add strength to the spine. When you place your cardboard for the spine, it's important to leave enough space so that you have room to fold up the front and the back cover to a 90 degree angle. To estimate how much space I needed to leave, I use the covers as spaces when I'm laying out the book and I mark everything in place with a pencil. When it comes time to glue the covers down, I stick them in place against my drawn out guide, then I close the covers and check that I've left enough room. While the glue is still wet, it's pretty easy to shuffle the covers along if you need to, to make extra room. You'll see me doing this in a little bit when I stick my covers down.
When it came time to cut away the corners for this cover, I made a couple of light fold marks at one corner of the book, then folded this up again to make a 45 degree angle across the corner. I cut away just inside the edge of that triangle, again making sure to leave a few millimetres of book cloth at the corner so that I had enough there to cover the edge of the book. I used the little triangle of book cloth that I'd cut away as a template to cut the other three remaining corners. Before putting both book covers under my weights to dry overnight, I quickly stuck my little accordion book into place in the soft spine cover so that you can see what this type of book looks like in a book cover that has a spine. I really like the soft spine for accordion books, as you can see the decorative paper when the book pages are pulled out, and the soft spine gives you a lot of room to move.
When you're ready, wrap your book covers in some waxed paper to stop any excess glue getting where you don't want it to, and place your covers under some books and weights or in a book press to dry overnight. When you take them out the next day, they'll be dry and you can bind your book blocks inside. And that's it, that's how you make a hardcover with a spine for your bookbinding project. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. If you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. I've listed all the materials that I've used in the description, and you'll also find links there for my website, my Patreon, my Facebook, Instagram, and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.